Good afternoon YouTube, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, if you've been following me today, you know I have been ripping apart this death cube from that I got at um, the local garden center. So I hate these death cubes and I had to do my part to rescue just one. You know how it is. But n now in this video, um, we are going to get this thing out of this death cube and save it. Um, in the last video, I talked about Venus flytraps as house plants, as this would kind of make you think that it, you know, it would be okay. In the video before that, I just talked about everything wrong with these death cubes. So if you want to see those two videos, make sure you check them out. They're just the previous videos to this one here. But now let's get opening this death cube up and get the rescue started. So the first thing I did when I picked them up at the store was, um, felt them and they were pretty dry. I seen them. Um, they even make it so that the store employees can't really get them out because they're sort of sealed in there. I don't know, maybe that's for theft or something, but let's see if we can figure out how to get this out without hurting too much. There we go. So there's little tabs in there. Remove the tabs, remove the plant. And there is my Venus flytrap. All in all, I think these ones were pretty fresh. They came in looking pretty good. I took this one because it has such wide petals. I don't know if it's gonna stay like that. These things have really never seen the sun. It's in, it's in um, winter mode here. I'm gonna put the tray over this thing so you can um, see it a little bit better. Um, yeah, but I thought, you know what? There's a chance that those might stay wide and it could be a cool little unnamed cultivar. So anyways, Let's have a look at this. It's very dry. You can hear it crunching. Maybe you can hear it crunching. I can hear it crunching. I think it's a little bit wet down beneath. It doesn't feel um, too crunchy down there. I think these were a fresh rescue. And there we go. So, sphagnum moss is an acceptable um, media for this. And if you wanted to keep it in this sphagnum moss, you definitely could. It's packed really, really tight in there. I think so it doesn't move around. There's a bullfrog in the background. If you hear something that sounds like a trumpet. And um, the root system looks okay on this. As I tear it apart, I wanna be really careful of the roots. The roots are these little black things here. And to the untrained eye, they actually look like they're dead already because most plants don't have black roots. But, um, Venus flytraps do have some black in their roots, especially um, everything other than the growing tip. The growing tip is usually still white. But I have to slowly knead this away. I will say the companies that do these, they can bang these guys out pretty good. They know what they're doing. They bang them out, they're, they grow fast, they're healthy. And um, this has a serious set of roots on it. So I'm happy with that. The roots are definitely like, if, if you're to snap it, there's no give, it just kind of like snap and it's broken. So I'm still trying to take my time. Now we're into the inner plug. There was definitely an outer plug there and now we're, we have an inner plug here. So I'll remove the inner plug of moss. We don't have to be too thorough here. I think I might just leave it like this. Gives you a good look at the, the rhizome. Nice looking plant. Um, I'm going to just pull off any of the dead here. If I had a pair of scissors, I would use the scissors. But um, yeah, so if you buy these death cubes, make sure you don't leave your plant in them. It looks fancy. They tell you to leave you the Venus flytrap in there, but we really want to get this thing out um, in some fresh air and slowly introduce it into some direct sunlight. Again, the container says don't use sunlight at all or no direct sunlight at all, but you really want these guys to have some direct sunlight. If you were to leave it, if you just took it out and left it in this three inch pot, the pot is so small and you can see the roots are quite big roots. They like to go down. So we want something that's, um, I'm going to try this pot here because it's a single plant. That's a four inch pot but it will hold like four times the media of a three inch pot. Um, these guys are so volatile. 
they're really wet when they're wet and then they dry out really fast and we want to keep this guy sort of a happy medium we want him to, to never fully dry out but um, he doesn't want to be sitting in much water either I might set this guy in a tray and the tray is going to have a half a centimeter water in the bottom of this for this guy and I will let the tray just go dry and then refill it up again so anyways let's get rid of that the media we're working with today as I say you could use a sphagnum moss and honestly I pulled out enough sphagnum moss that you could probably fill that four inch pot it was packed so tight which is crazy I'm going to use peat moss because that's just what I use and I try to keep most stuff um, on the same sort of schedule so decent decent roots for this guy one last look and remove anything dead under there it looks really good I think it was a a fresh batch in they had quite a few of them so this is a mix of about 50% peat 50% perlite and I, this stuff will pack down it's pre-moistened if you moisten it with hot water instead of cold water it moistens much easier um, peat moss itself is doesn't like to get wet it takes a long time so I'm gonna do this on this and you might be asking what I'm doing here and maybe you can st still see it. I'll keep it in the camera if I can. This thing has such a nice wide root system to it that I'm going to lay it in. Get that piece off. I'm going to lay it in here like so. Turn it around and I'm not working in the greenhouse today. I would usually use a pencil or something and push down all the roots we can spread them out somewhat sideways and not just poke a hole in with your thumb and drop all these like six or eight roots into there if it had one root I would poke a hole with my thumb but since it has so many I'm going to um, get it kind of looking like this first right beside it right beside the, um, the media that I have already in there and then backfill the other side And that way we end up with the roots kind of spread out a little bit. The one side of the pot is already quite packed as well. I pressed it firmly against the side wall so it won't be um, compressing down too much. If you don't pack this somewhat, you'll end up with a half a pot of peat and your um, flytrap will be sort of not in as much media as we would like it to be in. So there we go. It's planted right in the center of the pot. You can still sort of make some adjustments and um, push down some media with my thumb. I'm unfortunately setting off some of the traps, which burns a bit of energy, but um, can't be helped. You can see the rhizome there is up a little bit, but we are going to be adding a little bit more dirt to there. When I say dirt, I mean peat moss, media. And so packed it in somewhat firmly. Now I hate the look of perlite on top of my media, so I always keep a little bit of plain media just for the top so this is just plain peat moss and I'm going to try to lift up because I like the look better of just plain peat moss I just don't like the um it's I just don't like the draining capacity of plain peat moss as much so I'm going to do that do the last little bit with plain peat moss hopefully you can still see that on camera Alright, there we go. So even though this guy looks far from typical with these wide petalos here, it likely is a typical and is just going to um, change its growth habit and pattern once it gets in some sun. I think these were just to catch as much of the um, darkness inside everywhere it's been its whole life until this point. Um, being that I think this thing is um, pretty fresh out of tissue culture, even though it's pretty big, I think the best thing for it is it's going to go in the temper greenhouse which is going to get hot but I'm going to keep it much more shaded for the first day assess it after 24 hours give it a little bit of morning sun or evening sun for the next week or so then slowly start introducing it into more um, direct sunlight and hardening it off if I was to just put this into direct sun it is definitely going to just shrivel up the other thing I'm going to do 
is give it a little bit extra water for this first few days while I keep my eye on it. I might actually fill this up almost half, about a third. Remember how I said, you know, normally it would be a half a centimeter? Well, I'm going to do like a third of a pot of water somewhere along here. And that way I can make sure that the roots are functioning properly and sucking up enough moisture. I keep giving it just a little firm press down, not compacting it too much, but we want good um, contact with the roots and the media for when I do give this guy a drink, which is all that is left to do. So there we go. It took 10 minutes. We repotted and saved a Venus flytrap from the death cube. Now, I know everybody in the carnivorous plant community and pretty much everybody loves Venus flytraps. They see these, they have to have them. There's two reasons people have to have these. One is because they have to save them like me. And the other half is because you're growing it. Are you, you find it in a garden center or in Walmart or wherever you find it and you think it's a house plant. So if you think it's a house plant, make sure you watch my last video on our Venus flytraps good house plants because this little death cube certainly implies they are, but they really in fact are not. So now that we've rescued it, we don't just want to stick this back in a shaded window or um, in the center of our room here. We do want to give it some proper sunshine, um, proper summer temperatures, send it into dormancy for the first time in, in its life this fall and let it come back bigger and stronger next spring. So I hope you like this video, and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye guys.